This week on the Media Boss Podcast. It's it's really kind of a lesson for your audience of yeah. how much it can do for you that you can grow and doesn't mean nowhere in this conversation have I said I had to hire five people along the way because these are just an extension of who you are as an entrepreneur. Media Boss Podcast is brought to you by two of our new partners. One is Pantheon. I can't wait to tell you about them later. And brought to you by Convert and Flow. You're going to learn so much about them. But now it's time for the Media Boss Podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Media Boss Podcast. I am Dr. Barrett Matthews, and I am elated to have you here. We got a great show for you today, and I know you're saying, "Well, Barry, just say that every single time." Well, I can't help it. I, I just bring on some great people, man, and they make my show great. It ain't me. It's, it's not me. It's them. They make my show great, and of course, there's you. You make the show great as well. So I want to thank you guys for joining us on the Media Boss Podcast. If you're wondering what is the Media Boss Podcast, this is a podcast for anyone who is a speaker, an author, a coach, a thought leader, whatever. If you want to reach more people and you want to do it more expediently and efficiently, the best way to do it is through media. And what this podcast is for is to show you that you can do all media all at once. You can be everywhere all at once. You don't have to just do one at a time and stuff like that. You can do all media all at once. And we're here to show you how to do that. So I bring on some people here to show you how you can use media to your advantage. And that's what the Media Boss Podcast is about. Now, what I'd like you to do right now is to make sure you're subscribed to the podcast and make sure you're sharing it. Make sure you let everyone know that you are following the Media Boss Podcast. You can also leave us a great review too. We love, we love that. Now, what I like to do for every episode of the Media Boss Podcast is I like to open up with what I call the Media Minute. And what is the Media Minute, you ask? Well, the Media Minute is just a tip, some advice, some news, something about media that I think you need to know. And one thing I want to talk to you about today in the media minute is about social media, social media. It's one of those things that a lot of people thought was a fad when it first came out. I'm, I'm old enough to remember that. <laughs> a lot of people thought it was a fad when it first came out. But guess what? It is not a fad. And the one thing you want to do if you are working in social media, which I expect everybody pretty much is right now, especially if you're listening to this podcast, you want to engage with people. You want to make sure you're engaged. Don't let people leave you comments, likes, love, whatever, and you don't even engage with them. Because the only way you're going to feel a connection to an audience or build an audience or even grow an audience is if you engage with them. So make sure you're engaging with the people who engage with you. And they will feel welcome and they will take some ownership in what you're doing as well. And that way you can have a fantastic experience with social media. So now it's time for me to bring on my guests. Now, I want to tell you something, guys. This gentleman here, wow, <laughs> he's, he's done over 700 podcasts since 2014, 700 episodes, 700 podcast episodes. He's podcast that had listened all over the world, all over the world. He has gotten to interview some greats. Now, when I'm saying some greats, I'm talking like Mark Wahlberg. I'm talking Roy Orbison. I'm talking Mario Andretti. He's talked to all these people. And guess what, guys? He's here. He's here on the Media Boss Podcast today. So now hear this, everybody. That's right. You, you understand what I mean by this. Now hear this. I want to introduce to you Mr. Bruce Wozniak. Ward, and Bruce, I hope I got your name right. Wozniak. Is that, is, is that correct, Bruce? Please tell me. <laughs> it is. It is. Thank you for yes. pronouncing it properly. <laughs> and thank you for having me on. Oh, man, I, I hate messing up people's names because like, people mess up mine enough. So, so I'm glad to have you, Bruce. Man, I, I don't even know where to begin with you, man. You're doing it all. You, you're, you're really doing it. So let's talk about now, now Hear This Entertainment. Tell us about that. Now Hear This Entertainment is the weekly podcast that I started back in February 2014. And it's funny because, as you know, the podcast world has changed so much. And back in February 2014, when I started Now Hear This Entertainment, I thought, oh, a podcast, it'll just be something that'll help me market my business. And it was just kind of, you know, one of those things on a list of these are the different marketing strategies that I'm going to employ. And now here we are in 2022 and podcasting means so much more. And as you said, with that intro, one of the things that I have found that's powerful about podcasting is it has enabled me to make all those connections and to get in touch 
with people who would otherwise have never answered my phone call, would have never answered <laughs> my email. So really it's shown how powerful podcasting can be. And, and I'm, I'm glad you touched on that a little bit because I, I, I emphasize to people all the time about using media. So in what way has it affected you? Well, that shift over the years that I saw from maybe this will help me get new clients to, gee, I'm sure making a lot of good contacts, is it's actually helped me to serve my own clients better. Because now all of a sudden, if they have a pain point or just a desire and are kind of looking for something that I can help fill a void, mm -hmm. it might be in the form of me making a connection and saying, gee, I had this person on my podcast, he or she would be a wonderful connection for you. And I can kind of bridge that gap. And of course, I want everybody to be happy in it. But of course, for my client, they all of a sudden see more value in what I'm giving them by saying same thing. This is somebody who I probably would have otherwise not gotten to know. You could say, had I not been working with Bruce, but yeah. really tying it back to the podcast and saying, I'm grateful that Bruce does this because I'm one of the beneficiaries of him doing it because now doors are opening for me. Wow. Now, Bruce, I got it. I, I, you know, I, would, get, I would get crucified if I didn't ask you this. How did you land Mark Wahlberg, Mario, Mario Lopez, Mario Andretti and Roy Orbison. How did you get these guys? And, 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 and the keyboard from Aerosmith? Jeez, man. Yeah. You're a rock well, star yourself. <laughs> so Mark Wahlberg, Mario Lopez, and Mario Andretti, they were all guests on a second podcast that I do, which is called Catholic Sports Radio. Okay. And on that podcast, I interview Catholics who are current or former athletes, coaches, referees, umpires, clergy, administrators, and more. And we talk about the intersection of their faith life and their sports life. So I don't report scores or talk about wins and losses and statistics. Okay. So all of a sudden, when you find out that someone like Mark Wahlberg is Catholic, you find out someone like Mario Lopez is Catholic. You Sure, I'll say Mario Andretti. But in the case of the first two, uh -huh. you say, okay, but I'm going to be loyal to my format. What's their connection to sports? And so fortunately with Mark Wahlberg, we all know that he's always on the cover of fitness magazines, yeah, yeah. but he had played a boxer in a 2010 movie called The Fighter. And so the way I was able to get him was he was out promoting Father Stu, which was a movie that he had done yeah. about a true story. And that priest in real life had been a boxer. So mm. he wanted to promote the movie. I wanted to talk about faith and sports. He's Catholic. He had the sports connection. There it is. Same thing, Mario Lopez. I just happened to see that he had been inducted into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. It turns out that he had a very decorated wrestling career as a student athlete, mm -hmm. and he's very out there about his faith. You know, the keyboard player for Aerosmith is a fun story because it's really just Barrett, a, a classic example of, it's one thing to make connections, but it's another thing to maintain those relationships. Yeah, yeah. And his name, his name is Buck Johnson, and I've known Buck for years. Uh -huh. And so that was just a case of, Hey, you know, I'm, I've got this podcast that's got a lot of momentum. I'd love to finally have you on. And he was happy to do it. Wow. Now, I, I, I got to ask you, you've been doing this since 2014, a weekly podcast since 2014. H has that become somewhat of a chore to you or is it just still fun? It's still fun. And I think because I've done it for so long, I think I have such a nice rhythm down that it doesn't become a chore because you have that system and I don't want to say it becomes wash, rinse, repeat, but I think it was more of a, in fact, it was so much of a chore at the beginning and, and I'll give a media minute for your audience. Go ahead. If you want to start a podcast and you are really bogged down by this seems like it's really tough to do. That's what I thought back then. So I went to a local recording studio and I thought this guy will get me out the door fast and I can, I can be quote unquote on the air because mm -hmm. I didn't know about the technical side. Yeah. So Yes, at the beginning, it was a chore and you're finding your way through it. You know, as, as long as I'm into it now, no, it's not a chore anymore, but I still enjoy it and I still see the benefit. And, you know, I encourage people in your audience to just try it. And I don't want to say that in the sense that I'm implying that put a short window on it, that if it yeah. doesn't work after three months, I'm going to quit. Or if it doesn't work after six months, I'm going to quit because you're already setting yourself for, up for failure. But, you know, when you mentioned before Roy Orbison Jr., that's a case of just try it. He followed me on Twitter. Wow. Uh, or, may, or maybe I found him. Actually, it was it was the founding guitarist from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame band, Hall of Fame band Heart yeah, who yeah. followed me on Twitter. I followed him back and then I said, Would you like to be on my podcast? Roy Orbison Jr., I think I just found him on Twitter and I contacted him and asked him if he'd like to do the interview. And he was thrilled to do it. So that's why I encourage your audience 
to just try these things. The worst that can, well, the worst that can happen is they don't answer you, but the worst that can happen is they say no. What, were, you, were you nervous? Uh, I would say that for Mark Wahlberg, I was nervous for okay. Mario Lopez a little bit, uh, not with Buck Johnson because I knew him. Um, yeah. Roy Orbison, I don't think I was necessarily nervous with him. I think it was more just, you know, it, that was more of a case, Barrett, of really wanting to, and that that was an interesting interview because I really wanted to ask a lot of questions about him, about Roy yeah. Orbison Jr., because I figure he probably just gets asked about his dad all the time. And he just wanted to talk about his dad. So I thought, okay, really? this is okay. where I have to let the guest drive the interview. If he wants to talk about his dad, then let's do it. And I agree with you. <laughs> I totally agree. So you, you've been doing this for, for such a long time. Do you get, like I asked you to come in, do you get asked to do interviews a lot yourself? I do. I, you know, I also, because I really have that uh, PR foundation a, as a publicist, mm -hmm. I go and seek them as much as they go and seek me. I gotcha. think people do get kind of turned on when they see my diverse background. You know, I worked for a National Hockey League team for 10 seasons. I worked in the okay. Olympic movement for 10 and a half years. So a lot of people want to talk about that stuff. And, you know, my passion is podcasting now. So yeah, I'd much yeah, rather yeah. talk about <laughs> podcasting, but it all, it all seems to converge anyways. No, and I, and I get it. I mean, my, I have a background in sports media, so that's so. I, yeah, I, I I get asked sometimes about going back in television again. I said, not in that capacity. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like what I'm doing now. So with you with you doing uh, podcasting and you're doing so well at it, well, I got to ask you: when you started, what were some of the challenges you ran into? Well, somehow I knew enough to anticipate that one of the challenges was going to be finding guests. Mm -hmm. And so what I did before I ever recorded that first episode at the recording studio is I made myself a list of 20 people that I knew I could get, not that I wanted to get, uh -huh. but people that I knew I could get. And so that way I could kind of exhale a little bit instead of getting to episode three or getting to episode four and feeling good and then getting nervous and saying, wait a minute, what am I going to do for episode five? So I think that was a real big challenge at the beginning. And then of course, you know, finding your way through the whole process and developing some kind of a system later on down the road, I think one of the chores was divorcing myself from the studio and figuring out how to do it on my own. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a place where, and again, you really have to lean on the experts. And I was very yeah. fortunate to connect with somebody who, thanks to the beauty of the technology that we have today and being able to video conference, he was really able to kind of teach me long distance on how to edit myself, how to record myself, how to kind of handle all the production that the recording studio had been doing for me. So that was a real big kind of moment because you do get nervous and you think, oh my gosh, it's totally up to me now. And yeah. I've never done this before. Now, with, with your Catholic Sports Radio, uh, Catholic Sports Radio podcast, was there any, I don't know, question or apprehension about doing a faith-based podcast? No, actually, I think the kind of middle ground there in your question that I faced was, am I going to find enough people that meet that criteria? Because you could read all over the internet till the cows come home about any and every sports athlete that's out there playing any sport. Mm -hmm. But it's very difficult to find, are they proud of their faith? Are they Catholic? Are they Methodist? Are they Baptist? What are they? So that was kind of the, the part that I struggled with a little bit. Mm -hmm. And the longer I've done it, that one I've done for every week for more than three and a half years. I'm up to 192 episodes. Wow. So that Great one, job. you know, I've been very diligent about making sure that I'm staying on top of finding those guests because... For now here, this entertainment, there's no shortage of the, the way I define those guests is people who are having success in entertainment, primarily music. Right. And there's no shortage of guests for that show. But for Catholic Sports Radio, it's a little tougher. So I think I work a little bit harder at making sure I don't get myself to a point where I think this show might be at an end date because I don't have enough guests left. So fortunately, I've not had that problem and I hope it will yeah. continue. Oh man, I'm sure it will. At the rates are going, I'm sure 192. I'm sure, I'm sure. Well, you got another anniversary coming up with 200. So a milestone, <laughs> I should say. So with now here this entertainment, what made you pick that topic of uh, people in entertainment specifically in music? Well, my business at the time, I was going to say was, it still is, although my client base has diversified more. But at the time, I was so focused on providing management, promotion, and booking services for independent mm -hmm. artists 
that I thought if I do a podcast about it, not only could I, again, at the time I thought it was maybe attract new clients, mm -hmm. but I thought this way I could learn more about the business myself and ask the questions that I want to ask and get the answers to. And I also kind of anticipated questions that indie artists were having. So that was a large part of it. But I think Barrett, that another part of it was as a publicist, I said to myself, I really wish that there were opportunities for long form interviews for my clients mm -hmm. and not just the five to seven minute interviews they do on the radio where they ask you the same predictable questions. I want a real deep dive so that my client can really tell his or her story in depth. And I thought, well, that's what I can do. I can really turn these into very long form conversations. And I'll admit it. I did not realize at the time that I was setting myself up for building a foundation for a relationship with someone. Because if you talk to someone for, sometimes my episodes are 45, 50, 55 minutes long, they've gone an hour. And mm -hmm. so when you're talking to someone for that long, and of course there's the time before you hit record, the time after. Yeah, so in some cases I've been talking to someone for 75 minutes. Yeah. You make a good impression on we them. Do. And we do. yeah, exactly, exactly. So you know, one thing you do, I'm, I'm giving you a virtual high five because one thing you do something that I love and I'm so happy that you do. You've basically created an ebook series based on your content. You can talk about that. Yeah, that was kind of a case of where I had gotten so far into doing the podcast that, and again, if you keep in mind the length of my episodes that I just mentioned, mm -hmm. I got to a point where I thought, oh my gosh, what if somebody just now finds now here this entertainment and they say, I like that Bruce gives out this little tip in the middle of every episode, but I thought it's going to be a lot of work for them if they just discovered it. And I might say maybe at the time it was episode 179. I'll just pick mm -hmm. a random mm -hmm. number. Mm -hmm. If they went all the way back to episode one, let me listen to that. Where did he say the tip? Let me write that down. Let me go on to episode two. That would take them forever. So I thought, why, why don't I just repurpose the content that I've already created and pull that out and give people a series of eBooks so that they can get those tips from the first 50 episodes and from the second 50. And, and then eventually I started adding in a tip that the guest gave out as well. Oh, and again, it, it was all really in service to the indie artists out there who yeah. are so hungry for this knowledge and knowing that, as I said, it was going to be too big of a chore for them to go and start listening from, from episode one yeah. and work, work their way forward. I mean, I love that. And because, yeah, my, the thing I always tell people is that everyone consumes their information from one source of media or another. And some of them may not want to listen to the podcast, but they may want to pick up in a, in a book or they may want to log on and read an ebook. And it's, it's, it's a way they consume their information. And if you meet them where they are, then you're, you're, they can't ignore you. <laughs> yeah. And what I actually did was thinking of that approach that mm -hmm. someone might find the ebook and not know about the podcast. I thought, well, I need to put links put in the ebook. Yeah. So if someone sees it and they say, oh, this guest, because I would have a short yeah, bio yeah. about who the guest was. And if they read it and say, I like this tip, I like what the guest had to say, this is a good bio, I should go listen to that. I made sure I had links in there so that they could go right to the podcast in case they didn't know about it. I love it. And Bruce, you're also a speaker. So I got to ask, during the pandemic and after the pandemic, has that affected your speaking uh, business at all? It did during the pandemic. Yeah. You know, it's, some events scrambled because they didn't know what to do and they canceled. Some mm -hmm. events shifted to online. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden you're operating in a totally different realm. Yeah. Uh, I have found that by this point, things are for all intents and purposes back to normal. Mm -hmm. And it is nice to be back out there talking to people in person and you know, that's an, again, I can't say enough about the value of podcasting, because if yeah. you think of the things, Barrett, that you and I have talked about so far, that means that I went from just being Bruce Wozniak business owner to now being Bruce Wozniak business owner and podcaster. Then all of a sudden the ebook series comes out and that makes you more marketable as a speaker. So now you're Bruce Wozniak business owner, podcaster, author, and speaker. Yes. And I don't want to say the opportunities come pouring in. They do, but yeah. It's, it's really kind of a lesson for your audience of yeah. how much it can do for you that you can grow and doesn't mean nowhere in this conversation have I said, I had to hire five people along the way because these are just an extension of who you are as an entrepreneur. 
That's that's great. That's a great way of putting that. And just like you've enjoyed speaking on the stage, I'm enjoying speaking to you. And guess what? We're going to continue speaking to Bruce. We're going to take a break right here, guys. We'll be right back with more of the Media Boss podcast. And we'll continue talking to Bruce Wozniak. So stay right where you are. We'll be right back. How are you going to learn everything you need to know about starting a podcast? Well, at the Create Your Podcast Weekend, we put it all in two days and help you get your podcast going by next week. That's right. By next week, all you have to do is come to the Create Your Podcast Weekend and let us show you how to get your podcast up and running. We will show you how to attract listeners. We will show you how to get people to pay you for your products and services. What products and services? The products and services we show you how to create all at the Create Your Podcast Weekend. All you have to do is go to createyourpodcastweekend.com and get registered today. And we have special bonuses. Some of you will even get us to give you the equipment to start your podcast. That's right. We're going to give some of you the podcasting equipment to get started. Go to createyourpodcastweekend.com. That's createyourpodcastweekend.com and get started on your podcast by next week. Starting a podcast can be a daunting task. There's a lot that goes into it, and you're probably wondering if you're able to handle it. Well, why don't you just take two days and let us teach you how to do it at the Create Your Podcast Weekend. That's right. We're going to show you all the aspects of how to start your podcast, how to keep your podcast going, how to attract listeners, and how to make money with your podcast. CreateYourPodcastWeekend.com. Get registered right now. Do you have a podcast? Would you like to have it heard by more and more people? Well, Pantheon is the way to go. Unlock the right mindset and tactics with our program. Create momentum with repurposed content. Get paid to build your business. And with Pantheon, we'll even show you how to have a team around you that gives you a community of encouragement. Check out Pantheon today. Hey guys, I want to tell you a little bit about Pantheon. Man, let me tell you, the Media Boss podcast is so successful right now, partly because of the work that we put in with our new partner, Pantheon. They have helped us to grow our listenership. Our downloads for our podcast have increased su- substantially over just the last four to six months because of our partnership with, with Pantheon. Let me tell you, they have made it so that we can do our work in creating great content for you guys while they help us to grow. They work tirelessly behind the scenes, making it so people are more interested in what we're putting out as far as the podcast. They put systems in place. They do training. They show us how to attract more people, and they're making it happen for us. Look, if you guys want to learn more about how to do that for yourselves or for your podcast, I suggest that you get together with the people at Pantheon. I'll set up a meeting myself with them so you can do that. Connect with me, and let's find out how you can get going with Pantheon yourself for you and your podcast. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Media Boss Podcast. I'm Dr. Barrett Matthews, and we are having a great, great talk here with Mr. Bruce Wozniak. Bruce, I will be remiss if I did not bring up the fact that you are also a publicist. So talk about your publicist business as well. So the publicist facet is really kind of what everything started from. And when I launched my company, so the company is called Now Hear This, or sometimes I will tack on because it's an S Corp, I will tack on that it's Now Hear This Inc. Uh, And the reason that I called the podcast Now Hear This Entertainment is very simple. I looked first to see, is anybody already doing a podcast called Now Hear This? Somebody was. So I thought, well, if I'm going to be interviewing guests who are having success in entertainment, primarily music, I'm going to stick the word entertainment on the end. But Now Hear This continued to function and still does as a company that primarily the emphasis, yes, is on being a publicist. And it has grown, as I said before, to whereas initially the emphasis was really on independent artists, meaning people in the music business. Mm -hmm. Now I'd work with authors. I do work with podcasters, entrepreneurs, small businesses, 
And so it's really grown over the years, but it's because the core services have always been more or less the same and they are adaptable from someone who's an indie artist to someone who's an author and so on down the line. So that's really kind of what I've always done throughout my professional career. I've always been in the PR world yeah. and eventually decided that I was kind of just helping somebody out out of the goodness of my heart who happened to be a singer and thought more people should hear this individual. And all of a sudden, as I started to get results, the wheels started turning and one day the light bulb just turned on and I thought I can make a business out of this. And so that's kind of how now here this was born. I love it. And, and guys, if you're wondering why, why do I want to emphasize the fact that he's a publicist? Because publicists use media. <laughs> they use media and it's vitally important for you. If you're going to grow, you're going to reach more people. Someone, someone like a Bruce Warzniak is definitely helpful to have it have in your pocket. Now, Bruce, speaking of which, what are you doing that the audience can support you with? Well, uh, I'm doing quite a bit, but I want to give your audience some more help here before I plug my own things because you know okay. I think you just I think you just made an excellent point, Barrett. I always like to tell people, and this is something that I do in one of my talks when I go out and do speaking engagements, is that there's that expression you can't be all things to all people, and I adapt that to mean you can't be on every platform. You know, you talked in your media minute about social media, and I f I used to say that the big four were Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. But now you can't ignore Snapchat, you can't ignore TikTok, and right. floating around over here somewhere is LinkedIn. Yeah. And so you can't be on all those, but at the same time, I think you're doing an excellent job of showing people how many different places you can be. You don't have to get overwhelmed by thinking, I need to be no. on all those, because someone is right now someone in your audience is saying he didn't mention pinterest or he didn't mention <laughs> and, and, and they've got their own pet one that they're but the point is that if you just keep operating your your business and that's all you do you don't start a podcast you don't start a youtube channel you're not mm -hmm. active on social media you're not doing some of these things we're talking about you're missing out on potential business so yeah so those are a lot of the things i'm doing um you know obviously the podcast has really become something that I'm really, really passionate about. Uh, NHTE.net is where people can find that, by the way, the acronym for now here, this entertainment, NHTE.net okay. is the website home for it. But I've got logos there for people to click on to go and hear it in different it. places. And then because we talked about the speaking, uh, that's at speakerbrucew.com. And then one other thing that I've done, Barrett, is, mm -hmm. you know, I've kind of sat back and put on both hats, the hat of as you asked me before, am I booked as a guest often on, on podcasts or radio or TV, but also, of course, my hat as an interviewer. Yeah. And I just see a void out there where people are doing these interviews because they are so much more easier to get nowadays, especially with the prevalence of podcasts. Sure. And I think they're coming away from those saying, well, I didn't sell any books from doing that, or I didn't get any new clients, or I didn't sell any more music because of that. And I think it's because people are just kind of skating through these too easily and not realizing there's a lot that you can and should do to prepare for an interview and to be successful as the guest on an interview. So yeah. I launched what's called interviewtipscourse.com right. where I'm giving people more than two dozen tips on being more productive with these interviews. And then I even have another module in there that provides 15 different sources that they can utilize to try to find more interviews and I really think that's a win-win for everybody because hosts like you, hosts like me, people out there who want to be guests that want to see these interviews bear some fruit, we all end up winning in the end. That's right. That's right. Well, Bruce, I want to thank you so much for joining us here on the Media Boss Podcast. And of course, you're welcome to come back anytime, but I just appreciate your time, my friend. Thank you. This was a lot of fun. I appreciate it, Barrett. Uh, no problem. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Bruce Warzniak here. Look, I got something for you guys real quick. I want to make sure that I give something to you. And that is my complimentary training to help you guys to get more paying clients. Not just clients that just want to look at what you're doing, people that pay you. So what I want you to do is go to www.5waystopayingclients.com. That's www.5, the number five, waystopayingclients.com. Go there, get your free gift from me to you. And what we're going to do, we're going to show you guys how we leave here on the Media Boss Podcast. We don't get out of here like everyone else. So what I want you to do is hang with us. We'll be right back with more and get out of here on the Media Boss Podcast. Stay right where you are.
let's face it, you've been talking about starting a podcast for quite some time, but you haven't started yet. Why is that? Could it be that you just don't have the time because your day-to-day keeps you so busy? Or could it be that you don't want to learn all the technical aspects that go into putting together a quality podcast? Well, at Media Boss Club, we take care of that for you. How would you like to have a done-for-you experience? That's right. At Media Boss Club, we build your podcast for you. We will edit your podcast. We will put in the music for you. We even put in commercial breaks that you can put your advertisers in. We will take care of all of the uploading to the great podcast platforms that are out there. That's right. We do everything. All you have to do is just right now go to MediaBossClub.com. That's MediaBossClub.com and let us handle the heavy lifting for you. It's time to be a boss, a media boss. If you're in business for yourself, it's time that you get your message out. And podcasting is the best way to do it. Let us create a done-for-you podcast experience with Media Boss Club. All you have to do is go to MediaBossClub.com and we'll create a done-for-you podcast right now. That's MediaBossClub.com. Do you have a podcast? Would you like to have it heard by more and more people? Well, Pantheon is the way to go. Unlock the right mindset and tactics with our program. Create momentum with repurposed content. Get paid to build your business. And with Pantheon, we'll even show you how to have a team around you that gives you a community of encouragement. Check out Pantheon today. Hey everybody, the Media Boss Podcast has been brought to you by our partners, Pantheon and Convert and Flow. Make sure you get with us so you can find out more about how you can help your business run smoothly with Pantheon and Convert and Flow. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Media Boss Podcast. As I told you, my guest, Bruce Warzniak, was fantastic. He was fantastic. And guys, hey, we want to make sure that you all are supporting the podcast. So you can go to Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Media Boss Podcast and support it. And we got some great gifts for you for those of you who want to support us. Also, I just gave you guys a free gift, a free gift for me to you, wwwfive ways to paying five ways to paying clients.com. Take advantage of that, guys. You can learn some things. Definitely do that. Also, for those of you who are really serious, I mean, really serious about learning more about how to become a media boss and how to get paid, what I want you to do is go to www.makemoneyfrommediachallenge.com. That's right. It's my five day challenge to show you how to not only put together media, but how to incorporate it around your business and how to make money from media. So go to makemoneyfrommediachallenge.com and I'll see you at the challenge. I hope hope you guys are up to it. And for those of you who are interested in doing your own podcast, maybe want some help with it. Well, go ahead and text the word podcast to 929-244-4323. That's 929-244-4323. Text podcast and we'll see if we can help you get a podcast going for yourself. And last but not least, make sure you all are subscribing to the Media Boss Podcast and sharing it. And also, give us a nice rating and a nice review. And guess what? We have a free gift for everyone who does that. Give us a nice rating and a review. You get a nice free gift from us to you guys. So I said before the break, we're going to show you how we get out of here. Well, get ready, guys. Here we go. We're going to count down from three. Let's all say it together for those of you who know. Three, two, one. Media Boss, out.